Hey everybody, Michael Koval Anderson again, urban designer, author, host of the TV documentary series about urbanism, The Life Size City. Welcome to another installment of 5-Minute Urbanism. So, I'm going to Dublin. Got my Sharpies ready. I've been sent this aerial map, Google Earth map, of a section of Dublin along the river. Uh, the Liffey. Is it the Liffey River? Yeah. And this is a section called Grattan Bridge. And I was asked to have a look at this. The city of Dublin is, like so many other cities around the world in this corona age, they're looking at how to put in some temporary bike lanes. And that's really cool. Some of the cities are doing it way better than others. Berlin, for example, uh, Milan, oh, the darling at the moment. This is gonna be a bit of an easy one for me because <laughs> I worked on this project in Dublin I don't know, eight, nine years ago? Like ages and ages ago in an urbanism context. We were on a team of local partners and me and my team were doing the peer review of whatever they ended up finding out. And I had to look at that and make sure that it adhered to best practice for bicycle urbanism. Dublin, the third great bicycle city of Europe up until the Second World War. You had your Amsterdam, your Copenhagen, and then you had Dublin. And it's amazing how we have such short-term urban memory loss. We forget these things. But I've seen photos of rush hour in Dublin in the 1960s, people impeccably dressed as everybody was back then, uh, just going to work on their bike, like most other cities in the world. But Dublin was especially, ooh, very, very good. So let's have a look at this. Dublin's pretty good for public transport. They're pretty good for pedestrians. You can see over here on the map, uh, some really nice wide uh, sidewalks. And then I don't know what happens there. It kind of disappears, right? The situation in Dublin, I remember because from working on this, is that they have these one-way streets on one side of the canal, or river, sorry, and one-way streets on the other side. One of the great flaws in, in, in thinking about transport in many places in the world where engineering is the dominant force is, oh, bikes, they're just like vehicles, right? Yeah, they can just do everything that cars can do. And when you just look at this right now, man, you can just see right there. Oh, I need a red pen for this, right? I can see a bike symbol in the middle of a car lane. Like, who does that? Come on. And then over here, there's another bike symbol, and it looks like, yeah, it says bus lane, bus lana. And uh, putting bikes out with cars and buses, you just simply don't do that. You don't mix these forms of transport. Everybody should have their space, and that has been best practice for over a century. So this is nothing new, kids, right? Then I'm looking at it more closely, and I guess bikes are supposed to drive, ride with the cars. Uh, in Danish, bikes drive, like they do in German as well, right? So I sometimes get that wrong. Um, they ride here, and then there's this weird little thing, a little, like, bikes shoot in there, and then come out here. But where the hell are they going? Why would you do this weird little dog's leg for bikes? Hey, yo, time out. Sorry, let me interrupt for a sec. Uh, I was really hungover when I made that video, and I realized when I'm editing what that space actually is. And, I mean, duh. It's a bike share docking system for the city's bike share system, Dublin Bikes. And from the air, it just looked like ballers because the entire rack of about 24 bikes was empty. So uh, that's a good sign because it is really one of the world's most uh, successful bike share systems in Dublin, uh, which is a sign that people want to ride, which is why we have to give them infrastructure. Uh, this is going over the five minutes, I know. But that's what that space is. So in the quick and dirty graphic that I made at the end, uh, which you'll see, uh, I took that into consideration. I didn't take away space from a really cool bike share docking system. Oh. Back to the video. Over on the right side here, there is like some painted lines. And I looked uh, on, on Google Earth myself and farther down here, there are uh, lots of car parking, right? Along the river on both sides as well. So the car parking ends just before this big tree here. And then they just decided to paint it in with lines here. So just unused urban space. And then they're sitting about whining about trying to find space for bikes. So there's space right there, those white lines. I'm taking that right up to the intersection here, pedestrian crossing, of course. Uh, and I'm just going to take it right back here. I think briefly looking on Google Earth, there is more than enough space for cycle tracks. One of the fundamental flaws, oh, I keep saying that, right? But there's a lot of fundamental flaws in, in uh, bicycle planning in cities that don't have engineers or planners who are familiar with it. 
This is a one-way street. I've seen this in other places. I've seen this in New York. They have a one-way street, you know, heading downtown, and then they have one bike lane, and it's following the traffic flow. But so many cities put it on the wrong side. That should be on the right side. If you're only going to do that, the right side of the one-way street with the flow of traffic. If you're really cool and you really want to be a modern city, of course, you'll put a contraflow protected bike lane in the other direction on the left. So that's a, that's a no-brainer, uh, but still so, so many cities get it wrong. So here, oh wait, it's Dublin, right? They're on the opposite side of the street here. Okay, fine, we'll make that work. So that would be on the left, right? Okay, I don't know what this space is here and why it's being used and then it just sort of ends. So I'm gonna try and just sort of ignore that a bit. Um, I might have might use some of that space by sweeping it in a bit here. And again, I'm off the map. I can't remember what's down there. But let's just do this. Let's put this bike lane in here. Best practice is minimum 2.3 meters wide here in Copenhagen. That applies really to anywhere in the world. Uh, so there. So I guess if we're doing the opposite thing because we're in Dublin, this would be with the flow of traffic on the left. And this would be the contraflow lane that I want to put in along the river. And this is, of course, is going to continue over here. So you're going to have bikes doing that. Um, and then you go up there and we take away some space from the roadway there. Um, we re-democratize the space. We reallocate it uh, in, for bicycle traffic. This is a really congested and polluted part of Dublin, these on both sides of the river. They're just still trying to squeeze all these cars uh, down there. And it just doesn't make any sense. It's not really an efficient use of public space and of transport space. Once we put in some best practice bicycle infrastructure in, uh, in Dublin here, uh, we can move 5,900 people on bikes every hour on this infrastructure. A car lane anywhere in the world really can only move about 1,300 people per hour. And I say people because most cars are single occupant in our societies. So we're going to just make this an amazing upgrade of capacity through this city here. Now there's a bus lane there. You can sort of see the yellow, right? And that's fine. Oh, nobody wants to take away a bus lane. Buses can move, what, 40, 50,000 people uh, a day when they're doing well and have a good system. So we're going to keep the bus lane. Man, not doing anything about that. And we're going to keep it over here too. Continue it. I don't know the volume here on this one-way street. Um, but it looks like it could be an important link. So why don't, why don't we just do the same thing? Let's just continue the bicycle infrastructure, take away some of the road space, reallocate it, redemocratize it, um, and do the same thing. Continue the network because one little bike lane along a river doesn't mean anything unless it connects up within a, a cohesive, coherent network of infrastructure. Man, the pedestrians got lots of great space there. I love that. So we're not going to bother them. We're just going to take you know, put in maybe 2.3, maybe 2 meters is the absolute minimum when you're doing this. Um, that looks like a sidewalk there. We're going to connect that up. All the space is here. All the space is there in every city in the world. Um, if you really want to take bicycle urbanism and public health and effective transport forms seriously. So here in Dublin, there's no exception. It's kind of wild to look at uh, cities like this and you see that they have one straight line in the middle, like you can continue straight in your car, and then they have a turn lane and another turn lane. That is, oh, that is the arrogance of space. All of that real estate in a city, that public space which belongs to everybody, and then you, you have an entire lane just for cars to turn left or right. Arrogant engineering. That looks like we're uh, pretty much done. Now, we did take away some road space and reallocate it. So uh, we're, you know, if we do the exact science and look at it and measure it, we're going to find that there's less room for cars, which uh, is an absolute win in any modern city in the world. Having worked on this project, doing this eight or nine years ago, uh, and nothing has happened in Dublin since. There was a little window they had back then in Dublin where they were, oh, they were going to move. And Dublin has done some really good things. Uh, it is... At some point in the last few years, it was the safest European Union capital. They slowed down all the traffic. Most of Dublin, I believe, is a 30 kilometer an hour zone. That's 20 miles an hour for uh, the people in, what, the three countries left on the planet who don't use metric. Um, but yeah, slowing down the city is a great thing. Now, improving the bicycle infrastructure is the next goal for the city of Dublin because they've been talking about it for almost a decade and done absolutely nothing uh, about it. One of the easier ones, again, I think uh, 
we figured that out. Now, of course, you'd have to connect it up and look at the entire length along the, uh, uh, the river here and just continue it that way, do it on the other side, improve mobility for the citizens of Dublin. Kind of fun to revisit a project uh, where nobody bothered listening to best practice um, and uh, some really half-assed solutions were put in here and there little you know little acupuncture we'll put in a bike lane here and then it stops and dies and you know doesn't go anywhere and this is a this is a bit of a no-brainer and what used to be one of the world's great bicycle cities it doesn't take much to become that once again there you go Grattan Bridge along the River Liffey in Dublin five minute urbanism Copenhagen Eyes, the definitive guide to global bicycle urbanism, available wherever you buy your books. A short introduction to bicycle urbanism for people who don't give a fuck, available in five, six, seven languages.